Good morning, friends. So I've received uh, several messages of late uh, as to what's going on with the channel, where I've been, how come I haven't been uploading videos, and I'd like to share uh, share that with you today. So my friend Jesse at uh, Pacific Northwest Dual Sports uh, invited me to come up uh, for a four-day uh, summer opener ride uh, with uh, 200 of his <laughs> of his uh, uh, fellow compatriots, and they participate in this um, uh, this dual sport event. Uh, so uh, Wednesday, I guess it was Thursday evening, I uh, started packing up and I got up early and uh, headed that way up to a beautiful um, northwest corner of Washington State uh, to a private campground uh, at Skokomish Park, uh, and that's on the east bank of Lake Cushman. Um, I arrived uh, and uh, set up camp and uh, immediately checked in with Jesse and uh, they were getting ready to head out um, and start setting up uh, some of the events. One of the fun things that they did was they had a, um, a scavenger hunt uh, where uh, I got to go with the guys and we went up um, and hid uh, some, um, some decals or some, uh, I don't know what you call them, little uh, t little. Pacific Northwest Dual Sport token deals uh, for guys to try to find. And we try to make them as hard to find as possible by putting them in a little dynamite hole. And one was put in a uh, up the top of a tree and the other in a toilet seat. So uh, I guess we'll just start right there and uh, just bring you along. So it's Friday and uh, my friend Jesse invited me up here to the Pacific Northwest Dual Sport Summer Opener. Uh, it's a, it's obvious surprise what a big event it is. Bikes from all over the place and you guys very graciously invited me to come up. And we're doing a pre-ride, we're doing a scavenger hunt, right? Yeah, yeah. We're hiding stuff, so you're going to give GPS coordinates and then the guys that come have to come and find these things. So we're trying to find really tricky places to hide stuff. Yeah, totally. And I'm, I'm, uh, I'm putting up a bunch of false coordinates too to kind of make it a little more challenging. So what's the link to your website for people who want to get involved with the, the group? Uh, it's www.pnwdualsport.com. Okay, so our first hiding spot's pretty clever. You want to show what you found? Yeah, totally. There's like a glass a, hole or a, something. I don't know what it is. Maybe for dynamite. <laughs> so I just shoved it up in there. So this is just a, a badge. Well, if you post yeah. this video, yeah, there's no specific place for it to be. So I saw on your blog that you uh, broke your kickstand. Where yeah. was that at? Cal uh, Colorado? That was, I think, it might have been Colorado, it might have been Utah, I can't remember. But it's this is, it's happened before. And, uh, yeah, I just find interesting places to lean it up against. And sometimes <laughs> people hold it for me. My buddy Jason held it for me one time when I went in the gas station. That was pretty funny. So we're looking for a second hiding spot. Yeah, I'm trying to find a, a good route um, that'll take us through back to the highway also. Um, I know this goes up pretty high with a good view and I think I'm gonna hide them in, uh, in really scenic spots. White caps? Oh yeah, I don't know, like a month ago maybe? Oh yeah, right out and then St. Helens. Doesn't exactly blend in either, does it? Being green. <laughs> no, it stands right up in the woods. All right, uh, better fly. How's that look? You see it? Can you guys see it? It's a little bit hard to see, so we're going to tie this orange string on here to kind of get guys looking in the right direction. Number three. This is number three. So you're, you're one, this is the good one. This should have been like number this. two. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna leave that one in the package? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no gloves allowed to retrieve it either. <laughs> So this was the first night in the new uh, in the new van, um, and everything went, went really well. The thing that I really enjoyed was having a furnace. I was looking outside. I've got a, a T stat on my bike, and it says uh, 50 degrees. So it was it was pretty chilly last night, um, and uh, I woke up and everything is warm. So that was super nice. So I'm going to give you a quick tour how I have things kind of laid out. This is of course a work in pro a work in progress, um, and then we'll make a little coffee. 
and then uh, we'll get set for the big day. I guess there's been quite a few firsts uh, in the van. This is the first time I've, I've actually slept in it. So the thing that worked out really cool was uh, since it's just me, um, I didn't need to have a full queen in the back. So I only installed two of the panels. Remember we put had a three panel bed there. So I put two of them in there and that worked out uh, really nice. Got my Scandinavian sheets, thanks to my, Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. W. Uh, so that's where I slept. Um, and then um, I've just got my dirt bike gear here uh, in um, the action packer and, and a couple coolers. One thing that I'm really lacking uh, is cabinets and storage space. So I've learned a, a, a lot um, about that. So I'm going to have cubby, make sure that I take advantage of as many of these cubbies and things when we're, uh, when we're doing the final panels. This has been uh, super cool. thing I've really enjoyed the most is this little panel uh, right here. Let me focus on that. Focus, or focus. Uh, this little uh, Victron here, it tells me lots of different things, but the thing that I enjoy the most is the percentage left in the battery. So you can see that I pulled in um, early, pretty early in the morning, and the furnace has been running nonstop uh, with the lights on and stuff, and it's used, uh, night, I'm at 92% my battery so that's very encouraging uh, know that the battery will run many many days without having to be recharged uh, running the furnace and lights just basic stuff charging phones and all of that um, but it's been really great so the, this is a thermostat and that's worked perfectly uh, it just keeps the van at a nice temperature and tied into the fuel system the, or the van's fuel tank makes it really nice um, got my computer stuff I built a, just a tiny little um, table kind of temporarily it's on hinges so it, it folds down and that's worked out pretty good so I'm getting the coffee started and then I've just kind of kept some food and things up front here so let's get our coffee going and then uh, we'll start getting up I'm going to show you how to make a really good cup of coffee with the, the bare bare minimum you don't need a coffee maker or anything these little um, little Starbuck vias they call them it's a instant coffee Looks like the mouse, a mouse has been at that one. Hmm, I didn't know mice would get into coffee. Uh, mice are the bane of my world. I just destroy so much stuff. So get your, uh, get your, you just need a little backpack cooker. Oh man. All right, backpack cooker here. Put your cup around there. Uh, it's just, it, you just pour it in. Uh, it's, um, it's not the best coffee in the world, but it's actually pretty, pretty good. It's it's better than uh, it's better than most of the stuff you're going to find at a gas station, and it's a whole lot better than the cup you're not going to have if you don't have anything. Let's see what's for breakfast here. Oh man, it looks like slim pickings. I was so excited to get here that I, I just really couldn't be bothered with stopping and getting a lot of food and. Now is when that you kind of regret that. We'll go we'll go in today and get some more stuff, but this is the most important thing of the day. Oh yeah. See there is no bad coffee. There's only that that fixes everything. It's the well like the hazmat guys say, dilution is the solution. I think it's time. I think there's a bit of my pack for some time. Yeah, they're not a powder anymore. They're more like a black tar. Well, I'm sure that's just going to make it even that much better. These titanium cups are great for backpacking, but you try to put your lips on one, they'll murder you. They conduct heat or transfer heat, so I'll have this come this little silicone deal. Oh, wait, sometimes I worry that I'm going to lose this thing. <laughs> I guess you just wait for it to cool down. But if you put that silicone deal on there, you can uh, you can drink it. Let's see how see how we did. Yep, we're going to need three of those little guys. So it's nine o'clock and everyone's just starting to stage up here. There's a food truck here that's serving a barbecue place that's serving breakfast. So check this out. Tri-tip breakfast burrito. This is a first. 
This looks a lot better than yogurt. Let's see. Mmm. That's delicious. So I bought, brought the wrong bike for a dual sport ride. And it's, it's, the gearing's too low because I was on 101 yesterday and I was maxed out at about 56 miles an hour. So I brought a 13 two sprocket so the guys are helping me put that on right now and that'll help us a little bit. All right, there's the 12. 13 right here. 13. Now I'm really going to test your mechanical ability to be a Loctite. I think I left that in the shop. It's going to clear. Yeah, we're good. Back with the actual job. That's a good trick to know right there. Yeah. Jacob goes through tires. I put doubles on his bike. <laughs> All kinds of different shades and stuff. <clears throat> okay, I'm in. Just, just about ready. Okay, I'm ready. All right, I'll start tightening. So we're about 10 miles into the big ride. I think that this ride is supposed to be 110 miles or so, um, if I heard right. Uh, so we're stopping here, uh, checking out the view, making sure that everyone's on board. We've got about 25 riders or so in this group, and a real mix of bikes, everything from dirt bikes to dual sport bikes, several BMW, G, G I don't know what they are. The big, Big cool motorcycles. Now you can take your fleece off. That's what I really want to do. I'm always cold. So I always end up wearing a lot. So we're about 20 miles in or so and we're stopping where we have a flat tire. So we're, I guess we're getting a flat tire clinic here. Our tour guide, he's, uh, uh, his name is Whitney. So you're carrying an electric. Ah, like, uh, uh, Linwood, Malling Therapy. It's really light too. Yeah. So you've just wired in a pigtail off yeah, your. Yeah. So it's just a battery tender setup. Yeah. Nice. It, it comes with a, a clamps too and other stuff. But this is the easiest by far. Yeah, that is so light. That's way anything. Yeah. Same battery tender could actually. You got your summer gloves on, I see. Yeah, ventilated. <laughs> So we're about 45 miles into the ride. We are, I guess, 10 miles from Brennan, Washington. So we're going to head over there, and some of the folks need gas. We'll get gas and have our lunch, and then uh, start working our way back. So I guess we're about 50 miles in. We stopped at this little town of Brennan. This is my first time in Brennan. Uh, a lot of the bikes needed to get fuel. I was a little concerned myself. Um, me having a, I have the. Oh, I think I'm the only one that has a two-stroke here. So <laughs> gives you an idea of my wisdom here. Uh, but I was wondering how much fuel that I was going to need for this uh, ride. But I, that's why I brought some extra mix. But I've, oops. I haven't even used half a tank. So that's good. So I just got a hot tip on the best seafood restaurant on the in the area called Hama Hama. So a few of us are gonna <laughs> are gonna split off and uh, go down there and get some seafood. So we'll cut our trip a little bit early, but it might be worth it for some good fish and chips. So 
we just got finished with our lunch, and uh, I want, just wanted to say how much fun I've enjoyed, or how much how much I've enjoyed this event. And uh, I think what makes it so special is the people. You have uh, such a diverse group of folks. You got folks from uh, that are uh, doctors and construction workers, and you've got husband and wives, you know, riding together, and and that common bond, I guess, of motorcycles uh, is something that that you always have something to talk about, even if you come from a very different. Um, social economical group or live in, you know just a different life altogether you have that that common bond uh, it's a wonderful wonderful experience and uh, I just feel very privileged to be a part of it so all right let's move on down the road so special thanks to uh, Jesse and all of the volunteer staff uh, that made this happen I had a really interesting time and it opened my eyes to um, I guess kind of a subculture that I was what was wasn't familiar with. I have never been around. Uh, didn't exactly have the right bike uh, for the for the partic- for the that type of riding, but uh, had a good time uh, nonetheless. And everyone made me feel uh, very welcome, and I appreciate that. Uh, something that I did I was made aware of by several of the folks that were there was um, uh, this trail, this this multi day ride um, that's uh, I guess pretty amazing. I think it's called the the Wobder or something to that effect. It starts in Cascade Locks, um, Washington. Uh, that's the Bridge of the Gods in the heart of the Columbia River Valley. And it uh, follows, it's a five-day trip uh, to Canada. Um, and it's uh, it has five different legs to it. And um, you, it, I guess it's just incredible. It's, it's mostly all uh, double track and some dirt roads and all gravel, but it's really re- a remote in a back way up to uh, Canada. And it's something that I'm thinking about, uh, thinking very strongly about doing this summer at um well, I'm trying to figure out if we could do some sort of a of a group ride. I just don't know, as far as my subscribers go, who would be available and who would even have an interest in something like that. But uh, um, let me know in the comments uh, if, if that's something that you would be willing to do. Um, that would be super fun. I was thinking maybe even Mrs. W could come along. Uh, we're going to, if we have four-wheel drive put on the van by then, if maybe we can use her as kind of a chase vehicle or maybe they just meet us on the Canadian border. I'm not really sure. I'll have to look more into it, but um, uh, th- but I'll, I'll post more information on that uh, in the future. All right. Don't forget to click the thumbs up if, uh, if you enjoy these, and I really appreciate it. We'll see you guys on the next video.